Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for making the time to join us at this uh, IB webinar on CTV. Uh, there's been a lot of interest in, in this, so we're very excited to bring it to you. We've got some fantastic speakers lined up for the next uh, hour and a half or so. Um, so looking forward to, to hearing from them and, and listening to some of the conversations from the various panel chats that we have set up. Um, you'll notice that we've muted your microphones, so uh, we'll unmute them at the end for Q&A. But if you do have questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat box. Um, the panelists and the speakers today will be will be looking at that, um, trying to answer either on the spot through the chat box uh, or at the end during the Q and A as well. So we will we will we will try and take as many questions as we can and try and address those. Um, but obviously, you can ask questions after the fact as well. Drop us an email, and we'll try and get back to you on on whatever we can. So yeah, that's kind of the the housekeeping for now. Um, so like I said, we've actually got a very exciting agenda lined up for you today. So I'm going to do a very short introduction to what and who is the IAB uh, MENA uh, in this region. And what, what are we trying to do and what are we trying to achieve? Um, we'll then hand over to Jan uh, from the Streaming Lab, who's actually pulled together um, with, with our support, a very interesting presentation on the state of the CTV uh, marketplace in MENA as it stands. Um, some really interesting um, bits of information I think that you'll, you'll walk away with today saying, wow, I didn't know that. That's really interesting. It's a very dynamic area, as you know. Um, and actually, there's a lot of activity in this space, which I think is really interesting as well. And often, you know, we say it hasn't come to this market yet. Um, it, it, it is coming. It has come. And it's definitely um, an area for massive growth um, in the future, we suspect. <clears throat> He'll then hand over to Hus Hussein, who will be moderating a panel focused on <clears throat> CTV infrastructures and technology and, and the, some of the challenges and opportunities that we face in that space. Got a really interesting group of speakers um, and, and panelists uh, supporting them from the companies like Urudu, from Zero One uh, Technology Company, Samsung, and from NBC uh, Shahid as well. So really interesting, different perspectives on what is required to make CTV a success in our region. We'll then jump straight over to Audrey from Equitive, who will talk us through um, the panel <clears throat> around advertising and content. And I think a lot of you on the call are, are from other advertising and content backgrounds. Um, so I think you'll find it very interesting to hear from some of those speakers. We've got the, the ad tech players like Teeds, for example. Uh, we've got publishers like Smashy TV, research companies like Nielsen, and planners and buyers like UN, um, you know, M it, 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 uh, <clears throat> Uh, UM um, advertising agency there as well. So very uh, a wide group of different perspectives on the advertising and content space uh, around CTV. And then, as I said uh, in the beginning, we'll have a couple of minutes um, of Q&A towards the end um, to take any questions or to cover any topics that you wanted to deep dive into beyond that. So just very briefly, what is the IAB? I think many of you may know, some of you may not. It's obviously a global organization. It's uh, around just over 40 countries around the world. We have IAB chapters, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and really what we're trying to do is we're trying to be the catalyst for growth in our region. So what we're doing is trying to bring together uh, stakeholders, different areas of the ecosystem to work together to find ways of nurturing our community. So through training, through development, through information sessions like this, accelerating knowledge sharing to creating an environment in which knowledge is equally and, and fairly shared across the whole market. There's transparency around information, um, but also establishing, cultivating um, accountability, uh, making sure that you know, we have definitions for things, that everyone's talking the same language, that there's not um, you know, un undue um, influence in certain chapters and, and, and issues, et cetera. So creating a lot more credibility around our industry, building those uh, standards um, and building accountability. We've got, uh, actually, I should have updated this chart. We actually have over 50 member companies uh, in the region uh, as we stand, a wide range of different companies from the ecosystem, including advertising platforms, agencies, publishers, sales houses, measurement companies, and even some advertisers uh, on board as well. We also work very closely with other chapters uh, of the IAB globally to bring knowledge into the market and to share what this market's doing with other markets around the world but also work with other associations in this region as well to try and accelerate the growth of our region together. Now we do that through a series of task forces. And what, what the task forces do is collectively, we have volunteers from our member companies um, who 
come together around specific topics. They come together around specific topics where there are subject experts who feel that the market needs to grow in a specific area or grow knowledge in a specific area. So one such task force is the CTV task force, which is what we have here today. And they've done a lot of work into and trying to understand what are the things that we need to do in this market to help the CTV market grow and to, and to grow in a sustainable way. So that's really what this task force is very focused on doing. The first um, output from the work that they've been doing is this webinar, but there will be further outputs over the course of the next couple of months um, and potentially even years as we go forward as well. So I'd like to you know, thank you firstly to our members who obviously fund all of these activities, but thank you specifically to the task force members on this call um, who, who have pulled together the, the background work that you'll see today. So as you can see, a wide range of different companies um, engaging in this, in this topic to make sure that we as an industry are growing together. Um, obviously, if you're not an IAB member and you want to get involved in these kind of things, reach out to us and we can, we can get you engaged and involved in our activities, either on CTV or other activities. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Jan Colleter, who will be talking through the MENA landscape um, around CTV, um, which will give us real context for um, the, the panels that follow. In order to understand, sorry, one back, yeah. In order to understand and to make sure that you have all the information at your fingertips during this call, we've put together um, two useful, uh, let's call them cheat sheets or one pages, uh, one around useful terms and definitions. If you're new to the CTV space, this is a really useful document, very clearly laying, laying out definitions for things like AVOD, SVOD, et cetera. Um, but also a quick cheat sheet on all the meat the players in CTV in, in MENA as well, so that you've got a sense of the scale of the market that we're talking about and the opportunities that are therefore presented. This is available now if you if you want to use your phone to, um, to access the, the website or alternatively to go directly to our website and you'll find it uh, on our website as well. You can do that either now during the call or after the call, of course. So that, that will you know, give you a moment or two to do that. Um, and then I'll hand over to Jan, who will talk us through the MENA landscape. Thanks very much, Jan. Thank you so much, uh, Jan, for organizing this uh, webinar. Welcome, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Jan Colleter. I'm the founder of the Streaming Lab, an agency um, advising OTT services in Middle East and North Africa on many topics around OTT, of course, content, market intelligence, um, and uh, advertising. The Streaming Lab is also a studio building streaming-based technology businesses. The live um, startups right now are TV Today, a content marketplace helping buyers find content coming from all over the world. Uh, the second one is OTT Pro. I'm sure you've heard about it. The objective is to gather um, uh, experts uh, in many OTT topics and uh, clients uh, coming from the streaming world. The, um, the last project I, I just launched is called Sand. It's a streaming advertising agency. The objective is to fill the gaps between advertisers uh, in the region and uh, OTT players, uh, publishers uh, that, that are uh, evolving in this, uh, in this industry. Okay, let's start quickly uh, with the topic today, uh, the CTV landscape in Middle East and North Africa. And we won't start with Middle East and North Africa, but let's see uh, what's happening uh, in, in uh, very mature markets in North America and uh, in Europe. As you can see, beautiful trends um, coming from a data that is very important, programmatic CTV ad spend. In North America, it's rise from, uh, by 4.2 times from 2019 to 2022. The year-on-year -year growth is also uh, impressive. Uh, as you can see, 32% from 2021 to 2022. In um, EMEA, um, of course, you can see that the trend is uh, huge and explosive uh, growth, especially uh, uh, from 2021 to 2022. Um, the report focused on EMEA, but of course, this growth is mainly driven um, from Europe. And uh, we can also suspect that it comes from innovative new models, uh, fast, uh, free, uh, ad-supported streaming television. 
I would love to share with you a nice trend coming from Middle East and North Africa. Um, but of course, we are not there yet in terms of uh, value, in terms of volume. So it's also the objective of this webinar. Um, what, what I would love to do is organize this webinar in six months with IAB in one year, maybe more, uh, and then see a, a nice trend uh, about uh, CTV ad spend first. Uh, and, and programmatic also will be great. In order to uh, establish what's the potential of um, of uh, CTV advertising in Middle East and North Africa, what's good is not to focus only on the trend on data. Uh, let's not wait for the data. Let's uh, let's see what's happening right now. We don't start from scratch. There are many OTT players um, in the region. I'll start by uh, the definition. Um, and you'll see, I'll try not to be too boring, a lot of acronyms, but I'll see it from a user point of view. So, so it would be easier for all of us to understand. Then um, I'll show you the rise of OTT players in the region, what happened in the past 10 years, uh, and I'm sure you'll be surprised. And uh, we'll move quickly to CTV advertising. I'll explain what's the difference between OTT advertising, CTV advertising. Um, it's the same, but not exactly. So I'll let you know uh, what it is. And of course, uh, I'll describe who are the OTT advertising players in the region, the active ones. And then out of them, um, um, where are the, the CTV uh, applications? Let's start with the main business models. A lot of acronyms, as you can see. Again, let's sit on the... Uh, from a user point of view, subscription, video on demand, most of you know what it is. Uh, as a user, you subscribe, you pay a daily, a weekly, monthly, yearly fee, and you can access unlimited content, premium content. TVOD is a transactional model. You pay um, one time and you can rent uh, a title, uh, usually a movie, for a limited time. Um, usually it's 48 hours. EST is a little bit different. It's called also download to own. And as a user, you pay, uh, it's like pay-per-view. You pay a one-time fee and you can access uh, the content, but indefinitely. It's like the digital DVD. Uh, AVOD, from a user point of view, you can access uh, content for free, but of course you'll have to watch ads. And then uh, hybrid models. The first one is hybrid, AVOD, SVOD. Uh, it can also be called freemium. Usually, um, platforms, they, they manage to attract a high volume of users thanks to the uh, AVOD part of the platform. And then they push them to, uh, to more premium tiers, subscription tiers with more content. Sometimes also you can access to a better quality of content, um, but of the, uh, also uh, formats. Um, maybe more features like download features, for example. Uh, two trending topics and trending models. Um, I was at Midcom two weeks ago and everybody was talking about fast, free ad supported streaming television. When I talk about fast in uh, the region, usually I consider um, like linear content within an AVOD ecosystem. Uh, if we talk about fast in the US, it's a li little bit more complex. Uh, there are huge players already uh, that offer fast and um, mainly based uh, on programmatic also uh, framework. Ad supported SVOD is very trending because, as you know, so in the past, uh, during the past three days, Netflix uh, opened like um, its new ad tier in uh, 12 countries. Of course, Middle East, North Africa is not part uh, of those countries, but we should see uh, these new plans coming. We don't know yet when. Uh, but I assume, uh, I'm not sure it's next year, uh, but maybe end of next year uh, or beginning of 2023. A lot of acronyms. Before it was easy, four main models. Today it's a little bit more complex um, because the models, they are not only uh, business models, they're also delivery methods. So you have a mix of on-demand, linear, you have advertising, you have subscriptions. So, it's not easy to follow, but what's interesting is that um, each region, and especially Middle East, North Africa, they are trying to find the, the best model for them. So 
Um, of course, it's important to have categories, to have acronyms, but uh, honestly, in a few weeks, in a few months, in a few years, we'll have much more acronyms, uh, new business, uh, some will die uh, and other will, uh, will uh, be reborn. A lot of experts, in, uh, especially in the US, they are trying to push, to simplify those acronyms and push two main models, free and subscription. And uh, I'll tell you why. Um, it's easier to understand because on both business models, you can have linear content on demand. Um, on the free model, again, huh, you see it uh, from a user point of view. It's free for you. You just have to watch ads. That's it. Subscription is a little bit different. And the new ad supported model from Netflix is on this category. Uh, it's not free. You pay a monthly fee, but that is much cheaper than the premium tiers. As you can see, a lot of, play, of players. If you, if we focus on the free, um, on the free uh, business model, the the players coming from North America here are mainly fast players. They are also uh, players from Middle East, North Africa, uh, that are pure IVOD uh, hybrid. I'll, I'll describe uh, all of them uh, on the next slides. And from the subscription uh, business model, you can see a lot of players that are well known. Not all of them are uh, available in the region. Okay, let's see uh, what's happening in the region. Um, and let's focus on the rise of OTT players in MENA. Uh, I'm not sure you know how many OTT players are available here. There are 50 active OTT services. The main business model is SVOD with 38 uh, players. When I say active OTT uh, services, I consider three categories, global giants, homegrown services, and international services that are active. So actively localizing their service um, with uh, Arabic UX, UI, with subtitles in Arabic, dubbing. Of course, uh, there are more and more hybrid uh, models here. Uh, I can count 11 for now. OTT sports is also a trending topic with six OTT inter international sports, but there are many more with local, uh, local sports uh, available today. Five pure AVOD, four kids niche services, uh, four streaming giants. There are much more and they, they will be coming to the region, of course, in the, in the coming months uh, and years. And we have only one ad supported SVOD for now, that is Watch It. They launched um, this new plan like uh, last month. So I'll keep checking, uh, keep checking them. I'm, I'm sure we'll get uh, very interesting insights. I love this graph because uh, we can see the trend um, and what's happening in the region. All the launches of OTT players in Middle East and North Africa. What's interesting here is that the, main, the first players were AVOD, mainly coming from the broadcasting world. They wanted to not to switch to OTT, but to start investing in OTT uh, with AVOD model. But quickly, uh, they also launched like premium tiers uh, and they become hybrid. Of course, in the meantime, uh, Netflix arrived in the region um, and, um, and, and big players also uh, followed. And what's interesting right now is that a lot of uh, new models are now focused on advertising. For example, the players coming from India uh, that have a lot of experience in hybrid models. And they, a lot of them, they launched um, in the region the past two or three months. What is OTT uh, and CTV advertising? That's important from an advertising point of view. OTT content, easy to understand it content that can be watched on any device with an internet connection this is to say on web desktop or mobile of course smartphone apps tablet apps uh, some set top boxes and smart tvs when we talk about connected tv we focus on one specific device that is the big that is the big screen and um, there are two main categories today um, so regular TVs that can become smart thanks to set-top boxes. Uh, you all know Apple TV, the black box, you know Chromecast, uh, even game consoles. They, they can act um, um, as a box to improve your TV. And then, uh, of course, 
TVs that have built-in internet uh, that we call smart TVs or connected TVs. And what's very interesting from an advertising point of view and from a user point of view is that uh, this device offers uh, the higher quality viewing experience. Let's uh, talk about OTT advertising players in the region uh, in the four main categories that I described earlier. Uh, Pure AVOD, the most famous one, or uh, Awan from Dubai Media Incorporated. Um, we heard about them at Next TV series like two days ago, uh, Heba Al Sam, that was very interesting. Abu Dhabi TV uh, from Abu Dhabi uh, uh, Media Group. And of course, Rotana, they launched the first service long time ago. Um, and uh, they are one of the players with the, the biggest library uh, of Arabic content uh, uh, in the region. A lot of hybrid AVOD, SVOD players. Shahid, of course, is, uh, is the first one. Um, but we also know WIAC, a service owned by Z5. They launched uh, WIAC, and they, uh, as a, it, it, it's an international service localized in the region uh, with Z5, but I consider, I consider WIAC as a local service. They now have 50% of content that is Indian, 50% that is uh, Arabic, and they really cater uh, at the audience in, in the region. View is also a, a very nice service. They come from APAC. Um, they are focused on emerging countries. They moved to the region, to Middle East, North Africa um, in 2016, I think. And they also launched in 2019 in South Africa. Other services also, Mahatat used to be Tele. They launched a long time ago. Uh, they are about to relaunch. Roya TV from uh, Jordan. Smashy TV also very interesting. Niche service focused on bu uh, business. They uh, recently invested in local sports, so I'm sure you'll hear about them uh, very soon. Crunchyroll, so everybody knows Crunchyroll, um, the first niche service about anime content. Um, they've been here for a very long time, but uh, they are investing a lot right now uh, in localizing in the region. So again, you will hear about Crunchyroll uh, very soon. And then the Indian players, Yup TV has been here for a long time. Uh, Z5 also, MX player, Shimarumi, they, they launched like a couple of months ago. Fast players, as I told you, I consider fast in the region, like a linear channels on an AVOD environment. So they're already very interesting initiatives. Rotana launched fast channels in 2019. Shahid, they launched also fast uh, 21 fast channels this year. So um, we, we'll see more and more initiatives coming uh, from the fast business model, end of this year and beginning of next year. And the first ad-supported SVOD player, watch it. They, uh, they used to be pure SVOD and they recently launched uh, three um, ad uh, tiers. So uh, let's see, but they are the first ones. Out, uh, so there are 17 OTT advertising services that are active in the region today. Out of them, 13 have connected TV apps, Android or Samsung. Um, I checked them all and uh, I could see seven applications that were serving ads. So um, today the objective is not to point out uh, who can serve ads, uh, who cannot. Um, <laughs> let's think in a positive way. Uh, there are many challenges in the region. There are many opportunities. OTT, there are a lot of advertisers today, so uh, you need also to help OTT uh, players uh, make sure that uh, advertising models become viable in the region. And the only way is to make sure that we all talk to each other, advertisers at the company's uh, OTT players. So big challenge, but I think, uh, I really believe that this webinar is also a, a starting point uh, for this. A few examples of uh, connected TV apps, as you can see, so the local ones, Shahid, ADTV, uh, Wayak, Roya TV, Awan, and Watch It. Those services in terms of UI, UX are much more mature than a few years ago. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you, uh, you use uh, some of them on a regular basis. Uh, basis. Uh, this is what I do and uh, I can see, I, I saw them evolved uh, on a regular basis, so uh, I'm, I'm very proud that uh, those services uh, are, uh, are better and better uh, every day. 
other uh, examples uh, from the region. So you can see Smashy, uh, I talked about it. And then the Indian players, the OptiV Z5, um, Shinarumi. We have VU uh, that I also consider as a local player because they've been localizing their content and their strategy for a long time. And then Crunchyroll uh, specialized on anime. I'd like to finish this uh, landscape by uh, some examples of ads. So screenshots from ads from connected TVs. I won't mention uh, where do they come from, but feel free to contact me later if you want more details. You know most of those brands, Emirates, Akia, Dolipran, uh, Garhart, um, Total Energies, and uh, KFC. Um, those are quick uh, examples, but we should see much more uh, ads coming from uh, CTV uh, apps in the coming, uh, in the coming uh, months. So I count on you. Thank you, everyone, for this first uh, CTV landscape. Um, I hope that we'll have the opportunity to, to talk uh, together again in, uh, in uh, next year, in the next six months, maybe. And that will be very interesting to, to compare uh, what's happening today and uh, what will happen very soon. Um, I'd like to introduce you uh, right now, Hussein al Shehabi from Google, that is going to speak about CTV landscape and infrastructure. Thank you, Hussein. I think, Ian, you, you have to unmute Hussein. Yeah, we're good. Am I, am I audible right now? Ian, I'm assuming you That's can okay. hear me, right? Yeah, I can so hear I'm you. Everyone else can hear me. Uh, good afternoon, uh, good morning, good evening, everyone, wherever you're joining from. Uh, thanks, Jan, for the insightful presentation. Uh, let me add a couple uh, cents before we kick off the first panel on landscape and infrastructure. Um, let me start by saying, and I hope everyone in uh, this call agrees to this, that the living room uh, is an evolving concept in the digital verse. Uh, agencies and networks are adopting different strategies to gain access uh, to TV audiences. Uh, buyers are already organizing teams and budget to take advantage. Um, this year, we estimate that CTV ad spend will total to approximately $21 billion uh, globally. Uh, as, as growth accelerates, uh, that number will reach more than $37 billion uh, by 2025. Uh, that's only uh, thir three years from now. Um, while marketeers are intrigued by the growth in uh, digital video streaming, uh, this trend makes it more challenging to create a comprehensive media plan as linear TV viewers continue to move uh, to streaming. Uh, um, they're spending a large uh, portion of their time with media on ad-free services like Shahid VIP, Netflix, not for so much longer, Amazon Prime, HBO Now, Disney Plus, and Apple TV, some of them also uh, moving away from uh, their, their current ad free supported systems. Um, and on the services where ads are available, like Hulu and uh, others uh, that Jan also kind of referred to, um, uh, the ad loads are smaller than they are on traditional TV. So changing viewing patterns are forcing marketeers to rethink how they'll reach their targets. And before I start, uh, I want us all to have this in mind um, as we get into the discussions, um, improving CTV strategies uh, through data partnerships and iterations means uh, four things. One, leveraging your first party data. Two, uh, leaning on your tech partners. Three, not stopping at TV, uh, because guess what? Uh, the average household has nearly 15 connected devices, and that is not uh, including wearables. Um, and last but not least, for defining outcomes and optimizing. The great panel, uh, or this panel, will discuss uh, what the challenges have been uh, for the media industry in MENA uh, to adopt OTT and streaming in the region, uh, specifically CTV, uh, the topic of our uh, panel today. Uh, it will explore the marketing dynamic, the current marketing offerings, how investment uh, has changed from infrastructure uh, slash technology to content and vice versa. 
uh, over the past years, uh, with the trends now shifting to more ad-supported tiers, as we saw from Jan's presentations as well. We will also explore um, how this new landscape is viewed. Now allow me to introduce uh, myself. Uh, my name is Hussein Shahabi, uh, and I lead our publisher partnerships in uh, Middle East and North Africa at Google, uh, helping our clients with their monetization and digital strategies. Um, I'm pleased to be moderating this panel uh, and this session on CTV landscape and infrastructure with our wonderful panelists that you see on the slide in front of you. Let me quickly introduce uh, the people that we will be hearing from. From left to right, we have uh, Ramon, who is the head of TV services at Uridu Qatar. Uh, we have Mohammed from uh, as a uh, senior manager uh, from uh, Samsung, uh, looking after smart services and content. Uh, Ali El Kontar um, from Zero and One, uh, founder and CEO. And we have Banu uh, Chada. Uh, from MBC, uh, who is the director of TV product and partnerships in the emerging market. Um, thank you everyone for being here, first of all, uh, and taking the time. Um, the biggest value proposition of CTV uh, are threefold, uh, and please add to this if you feel like I missed anything. One, reaching the valuable audience that uh, we want to reach everywhere, uh, and keeping viewers engaged with personalization, and three, measuring what's working and earning more money. Uh, keeping that in mind, let's kick off the discussion and I'll start with the first question. And I'll address this question to everyone because I'm interested in understanding each person's perspective because you all represent different stakeholders uh, in the ecosystem. So the question is, uh, it's, it's multiple fold. Uh, so feel free to kind of like, you know, um, uh, speak about it uh, as openly as possible. Uh, given the opportunity and reality of user behavior, uh, what are the challenges um, uh, you're currently facing from an infrastructure perspective? Um, and how have they changed, including uh, your focus and investments versus the past years? As, Jan, as we saw from Jan's presentation over the past years, we saw a lot of um, changing parts and variables. Um, so how do you uh, see your investments and focus areas uh, changing over the years, uh, given the challenges? And uh, if you have any perspective about any other market, uh, how do you see the MENA market from an infrastructure perspective uh, different than other markets? Let me start with uh, Ramon. Um, and just for the sake of time, if you can just like, you know, keep kind of like your answers within, um, within a minute or so, uh, that would be great. Sure. Sure, thank you, Hussein, and uh, happy to be here. Uh, hello, everyone. Well, we, we are, I represent Urido Qatar. So basically, um, although Urido Group have, uh, has ambitions for other opcos, and that uh, means a different infrastructure required, uh, in Qatar, we have been going and we are going through a significant transformation because, as probably many telcos that deploy uh, TV services over fiber in the recent years, our infrastructure is suitable for uh, optimization of the linear transmission that is multicast, but is not that well prepared for uh, what we are talking about here, that is connected TVs, OTT, delivery to other devices in the house, programmatic advertisement. So a few, say, early last year, we decided to start thinking about the future. And um, as you mentioned before, we know that more and more connected devices are in the households in Qatar. We know that we need to be part of the advertisement community and try to, 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 uh, to bring new revenue streams to Urido Qatar. So we embark in a, in a transformation of the whole ecosystem from the head end, encoding, transcoding, delivery mechanisms is not longer multicast, it's going to be unicast, adaptive bit rate. This is going to allow us um, to deliver our service in Qatar, although through our fiber network, to devices that before we were not able to deliver, before it was only delivered uh, delivered to our set of box, we believe that we will be able to deliver to other devices in the house. And with this transformation, we will be able to adopt technologies like FAST, uh, AVOD, or even uh, being able to uh, explore a programmatic advertisement with partners on the content side. So it, it's challenging because we were born multicast, but at the same time, we believe that is the future. And no matter what, we need to do this transition to be ready for the future. 
Thank you, Ramon. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, let me move to uh, Mohammed. Uh, Mohammed, what are your challenges and how have your focus areas kind of like changed over the past years? Um, hi, everyone. Thank you, Hussein, uh, for this question. Um, and thank you for having me today, guys. So, um, see, from, from infrastructure perspective, to be honest with you, um, I wouldn't really focus now on the infrastructure as, as I don't think that this is now with the current um, advancement that we have it currently uh, provided from all the big companies now in the region and, and also globally. I think the infrastructure, when it comes like, I mean, to the internet, internet is, is increasing, uh, increasingly, the penetration is increasing and the internet speed is increasing. And currently, I don't think, I mean, maybe there is some countries still. I mean, as you know, MENA region, it's scattered countries. We have so many countries. This is one of the major, let's say, um, uh, let's say issues because in each country, there would be like different kinds of regulations. You have to obey this kind of things. So I think this is number one issue that, I mean, I'm talking now from Samsung perspective. I think this is one of the obstacle. It's not obstacle, let's say it's, it's kind of, um, uh, uh, and, and, and not even issue, but kind of like logistical uh, consideration that we have to keep in mind. Okay, um, other than this, I think Samsung, as, as maybe you are guys aware, we already have, I mean, the connected TVs, uh, business monetization, we already have it like in different region. And we are thinking now, I mean, to, to, to talk about also MENA. However, uh, so from, I don't think that the infrastructure is the issue. Now, I mean, the way we have to look into it is, how prepared the advertisers actually to this kind of new uh, a new stream of uh, advertisement this is number one how the customer is looking to it how the content providers also they are looking to it from to generate a new revenue as Jan he mentioned at the beginning like most of the adver uh, the, the content providers streaming services they are focusing on the esbot as of now totally totally agree that currently there is no programmatic for example integration properly available in the market like i mean especially when it comes to the ctv which is something we as i mean i mean that the, the oems for example that the, the tv manufacturers we should take care of it okay which is already i think i mean this is doable this is not a big issue we already have it in different region we just need to expand it so what i'm trying to say here rather than Definitely, there will be like some, let's say, obstacles. There is infrastructure, but I think now the infrastructure year on year it's advancing. So if you look into the internet penetration, as I said before, it's increasing. The the percentage of the connected TVs it's increasing. Definitely, I mean there is some advanced country like I mean from Samsung here we also cover Mena, uh, Turkey, we cover so many other countries. But also here, if I look into Mena countries, there is so many countries in Mena which maybe they are a little bit more advanced even from some Europe countries, okay? When, when it comes like to connectivity, I mean, taking into consideration also Qatar. So Qatar, I mean, one of the country that they, their uh, internet penetration is extremely high in terms of speed, in terms of number of people they are accessing the internet and this kind of things. So accessing the, the, uh, the, the CTV, I think now it should be, it shouldn't be the issue that how, how about the infrastructure? I think in many countries, infrastructure is already there. What we just need to do is just like I need mean, to look into now how the business can focus now into monetization and generate a new uh, stream. And by the way, this is going to add a huge benefit because now the content provider, there's so many content creators, they are not thinking twice before they do that because they know that so many customers, they are not subscribing at the end. So in that case, I mean, if, if there is a stream of advertisements that will make them to generate the revenue, will make them to take the ROI of their investments to create the content, more content will be, will be created. The customer will be happy because he will be able to watch with advertisement for free, or he will be choose to, add, to, to, to watch the content on the subscription by paying like a small amount of money. So this is definitely is going to add big value. Um, I don't want to, to, to highlight too much now the infrastructure because I think now the infrastructure and increases the, the, the more yeah, I don't wanna, the country. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I have a lot more questions for you later on because I just like uh, I'm very uh, conscious about the time. Sorry to cut you off here. I think you shared already some insights, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep the, the rest of the conversation maybe uh, uh, to, to later questions if that's okay with you. That's so fine. we can move to the others. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, very insightful. Uh, Ali, maybe like uh, in 60 seconds, maybe you give us your perspective around the challenges. 
Yeah, thank you, Hussein. Thank you. So I would have a different maybe perspective as coming from a cloud native uh, partner supporting uh, usually in the whole journey, which um, we see this journey starting from uh, uh, ingestion when you get the content until the delivery to the end user, right? So technically an infrastructure is between a third party where you are streaming or getting data or all the content and between delivering and there is the middle space where you are building all these uh, uh, tooling or using certain uh, technologies whether uh, to encode to localize to translate and that's the infrastructure end to end so there is the last mile which is uh, Muhammad was focusing on maybe which is internet which is usually with telcos and that's something usually we cannot control it's more about the telcos who can invest with governments with the country infrastructure but what about the back-end infrastructure how you're uh, managing everything from storage from media content ingestion from you mentioned two very important uh, 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 keywords in your intro Hussein, which was personalization and measurement and this is machine learning and analytics. And that's the infrastructure that we need to invest in for the future for continuity. I can highlight next uh, in the next question. I don't want to take much of the time for now. Just wanted to highlight this. Thank you. Thanks, Ali. Very, very insightful. Uh, last but not least, Banu, uh, would love to hear your perspective. Uh, thanks, Hussein. Uh, uh, glad to be here. Uh, morning, everybody. So yeah, very interesting question, Hussein. I would say that NBC has been the incumbent in the space, right? So we've been doing the ad supported tiers since 20, 2010, and I think we have seen the market graduate, uh, if, if not mature, uh, for a very long time. And, and we've seen different kinds of challenges when it comes to infrastructure. But uh, to give you a perspective, I would rather put it from a consumer's eye, right? So we've always wanted to be at the forefront of the technology evolution, and we've always wanted to be in a space where we are offering the best experience to the users, right? So the uh, I, I think uh, Sherry, if you alluded that uh, yes, MENA market is not one one size fit for all strategy. It, it, it's not the same infrastructure everywhere. It's not in the Yemen. It's not in Syria. It's not the same. But we expect user to have a similar uh, experience, right? So to address that fragmentation, there's a lot of endpoints, right? There's a lot of uh, different types of television. There's a lot of different types of measurements that are required. Sometimes some of them are, are not yet mature. Uh, shipping uh, an endpoint is something and uh, and harvesting that data that, I, that can actually set up your infrastructure and business strategies is something else. And I think that's we, we, we see as a gap and something that should be addressed as we move forward with the connected television as well. In terms of uh, uh, other technologies, uh, as, as, you, as, as you talk about, I think there's something important that we also need to consider, not just from an infrastructure perspective, but also from a, from a business perspective. perspective. Jan, spoke about so many different type of business models that are uh, that are evolving right we recently launched uh, uh, fast uh, fast channel as well on the on the on, on shahid uh, from that perspective the personalization is very critical right having those multiple playlists right so the technology that supports that uh, to make it uh, personalized streams that's 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 critical going forward then then comes the measurement because at the end of the day uh, the, the validity of the traffic when you are serving ads, uh, the measurement that you're offering to, uh, to the agencies, to the, uh, 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 to the advertisers, right? So those deeper metrics, uh, metrices of, uh, let's say, audibility, uh, uh, viewability rates, uh, the completion rates, et cetera, which actually make sure that your inventory is not commoditized. So the technologies around those, we always feel, feel there are challenges to ensure that uh, uh, one is on the service to make it appeal and continuously uh, remain engaging at the, at, at the fore of the user's expectations. At the same time, has that kind of business flexibility to ensure different kinds of business models can be experimented, uh, matured, and, uh, uh, and, and they are fit for, for, for the entire B2B community. Hope that makes sense. Thanks, Vanu. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, very valuable insights from everyone. And, and now I'll ask a very targeted question to very specific people, uh, depending on their uh, area of expertise. Uh, Ali, if I go back to you, and this probably kind of like applies to all the panelists here, but maybe from a, um, a cloud solution services that you're providing, mm -hmm. um, after mm -hmm. you heard the current challenges for in, in an infrastructure, yeah. 
Uh, can you briefly give us uh, an overview of maybe your solution? Um, and sorry, I'm gonna limit the the, the time to uh, all of these questions to maybe like a minute, just because uh, we're we're tight on time yeah. on this panel. But uh, if you yeah. can give us so, an overview of the solution and mm -hmm. what uh, an ideal offering could look like, uh, what is the value proposition, and what are the future plans uh, for us yeah. to address it, like, the, the challenges. So, so, so technically, as as zero and one, we offer services using the AWS cloud as a platform where we see the innovation, right? So we try to uh, solve some pain points by using this platform as in from an innovation perspective. So let me give you five uh, the different pillars where we look into uh, supporting uh, customers specifically in this region. I mean, we focus that there are different infrastructure uh, uh, pain points, which are reliability, and there is the performance, and there is the security, and there is the cost optimization. What we have seen, uh, all the changes of human behavior and us during COVID and after COVID, we're spending much time using our uh, TVs, uh, 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 iPads, phones, whatever. So technically, the, the human behavior has changed. So how do we adapt subscription models where before like the stickiness was something like uh, you would want to, but then we, we went into like, how can we, if people are just staying much more using the service, costs are getting like somewhere from streaming perspective. And then we had to rethink of this model. So how you can get those insights specifically from two aspects. One is using the purpose built technologies so you can do more from a performance perspective at a less cost and that's where fitting the technology that's for the built for the future rather than technologies that were built in the past and the second part is how we can optimize from a costing perspective specifically that i think 100 percent of the startups are going cloud native nobody is coming from a, 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 a buying hardware anymore like what's the compute i'm using are the storage uh, uh, i'm using tiers are right should i archive how can i use less storage uh, in a, a, for 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 my content how can i use how can i build my data lakes so i can visualize and understand better the behavior how can i have uh, uh, some uh, models when it comes to ai and machine learning personalization or forecasting uh, churn rate uh, uh, there are one of the projects where about churn rate, uh, what should that should be the next. Um, and on top of all of these is DevOps and automation. So that's what we try to help our customers with. Like you need to think that content should arrive and the whole workflow should be just as smooth and automated with almost zero uh, human intervention, let's call it this way, in standardized. And this gives you an edge, reducing the MTTR because the 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 end user MTTR is the mean time to recovery. So the end user is looking for a quality of experience, right? We're not just looking to receive the service with whatever technology. As a consumer, I expect a quality of experience standardized across all my devices anytime. So keeping up in this space, you need to be uh, more or less at the edge all the time with the technology. And this is where we try to help our customers. Amazing. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Ali. Of course. Uh, uh, let, me, let me go back a, a little bit to uh, uh, Banu and, uh, uh, and I have a two part uh, question. Uh, one is, what are you looking for in a, in a vendor uh, or maybe like an entire tech system uh, to support you achieve your goals that you talked about uh, or launch a TV in general, uh, launch a, a successful CTV product? Um, and in general, uh, how has or how will your organization approach technology restrictions and most importantly, uh, your advertising content and uh, strategy giving both the AVOD slash uh, SVOD play? Uh, excellent question. So let me just try to address them uh, in, in two parts as well. Uh, so as I uh, initially said that, again, at the most important, the four of it is always the consumer, right? So, so the technology or the service that supports us has to take into consideration what's 
uh, consumer wants, right? At the end of the at the end of the day, uh, there has been a, a significant shift in consumer behavior. What we have observed is a lot of users are now now coming and accepting the fact that delivery of of the television, in, including linear, can happen over uh, over internet, right? So so that kind of services that support again, it's the it's it's not just the the, the technology; it's the entire ecosystem of a business that actually uh, resides with. That uh, be it business models uh, for fast, right? So be it uh, uh, be us onboarding other networks on uh, ad supported tiers with the dynamic ad insertion, insertion, whether it's on the service server side or it's on the client side ad replacement, right? So those technologies that basically fits uh, 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 fit, fits fits the requirement on the B two B channel, but at the end of the day, the experience has to be seamless to the end user. Uh, at the end user, uh, the experience which tells us today is that a lot of that viewing is going on the big screen, and we need to understand that the, the big screen viewing is laid back. You know where exactly it's a, it's a living room, a living room experience. So the quality of the service needs to actually mirror uh, the broadcast, the broadcast, right? The technology that enables that, the infrastructure that enables that, and make sure that uh, that the parameters meet consumers' eyes is something that we are always uh, uh, that's very important for us, right? We cannot do uh, let's say a, a sports broadcast on internet or on Shahid with a significant delay, right? So that's kind of things that we, we're always cognizant of that when we are actually uh, building a service or a proposition, proposition, it needs to make sure that it's, um, it, it, it basically meets the, meets the consumer's, demand, consumer's experience. It's the quality of experience over everything else, I would say. That, that's one. Uh, coming to the second part of your question on the content strategy, it's an excellent question, I would say that, because it's been uh, it's it's been years since we've been doing a word as well, and we've got a significant number of significant traffic on um, uh, on the uh, on the a word tier as well as on the on the s word tier of the of Shahid itself. Uh, when it comes to content, I mean, it's a, it's a it's a fine line. Something that needs to basically understand what's your uh, creative volume control as well when you're talking about the uh, uh, talking talk about the ads uh, uh, award side, right? So uh, your content volume cannot be significantly low that ads are repeat uh, that that you do not have enough inventory, right, to serve. And your ad volume cannot be of the quality that does not match your production quality as well, right? And when you're going into CTV, there's, there's a lot of personalization, right? So, so same ad may require four different copies. There's a lot of cost involved as well. So it's a it's a, it's an interesting space that we're keeping an eye on. But again, I think it would evolve as the industry evolves, right? It evolves as well. Uh, we are seeing certain uh, uh, certain aspects of that already moving. But uh, having said that, it's still at infancy. Okay. Uh, but but we've got a lot of experience of of over a decade of doing the award a award play play on Shahid, and recently we started onboarding even even the uh, the broadcasters uh, who wanted to come on uh, on Shahid and start uh, start monetizing those uh, those plays as well. Uh, I think it's it's as, as an industry. I think we we need to understand we need to understand and accept the fact that the consumer actually today is is. Uh, is, is wanting an experience that that is his personalized uh, experience and ad needs to basically target them in in their uh, in in their domain uh, and that is where the content also plays a part now content the way it, we see it plays a part is when you have something on the on the a word and it has a significant high volume of, of, of value in terms of the production on the production or acquisition of content then your uh, Ad inventory cannot be commoditized. Right? I mean, with with all due respect, but we've seen what 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 can happen in programmatic. But if that actually goes down to connected television as as well, the uh, I mean, we're not talking we're not talking here about user generated content. We're talking here about premium high value content that needs to be justified on the ad uh, on the ad tier. Uh, and if it cannot generate the the revenues that can actually work the engine, right? Uh, we 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 will uh, we'll have a problem. Uh, uh, and and then have we thought about the ad supported S word? I think that's an industry trend. Uh, can we do some kind of linear ad replacement on the S word tier? Potentially, yes. Uh, but it is something that we are all, uh, already thinking about. Something that I I, I can't say yes or no to, but uh, something that is always in works, guys. Great, great. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Banu. Um, 
I am out of time, but I want to ask this last question, and I would really appreciate Ramon and Mohammed. This uh, this question is for both of you. If we can keep it uh, to literally the last minute, I have a hard stop at one thirty uh, from the team. Um, so 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 let's talk to the operator and then the OEM, right? Like as Redo and as Samsung. Uh, maybe we start with Ramon. Uh, what or where do you see yourself playing an effective role in the ecosystem to ensure that as many stakeholders as possible uh, are achieving their goals? Uh, maybe 30 seconds from you and 30 seconds from Hamad uh, before we uh, end the panel. Sure. Well, what we see ourselves, the position where we see ourselves is basically enablers and aggregators. We believe that um, what customers want is to enjoy the best content and to find easy ways to discover the content that they want to watch. And we believe that we can play a role there. On the one hand side, partner with many uh, of the OTT players. At the moment, we have partnerships with Netflix, Shahid, OSN, etc. So we offer those services to our customers. On the other hand side, we will offer our own content or content that is traditional linear TV. That's one part. The last part of the equation is that we believe that we have already a billion relationship with our customers and we can make it easier for customers to just join these services. So it's one stop where you can go and find your content. If we do our job properly, easy to find the content through our uh, UI and device and buy the content that you desire paying, for instance, with Urido as, as payment method. That's the role that we see Urido can fulfill. Amazing, thanks for that perspective. Uh, I will end it with uh, Mohammed, if you can give us a, a 30 second perspective on your uh, role in the ecosystem. Yeah, of course. Um, actually, I totally agree with Raymond though, uh, regarding, actually what our role here is going to be, we are going to be the platform, okay? So we are all being the platform for the content provi providers to generate revenue. We are opening the platform also for all, all the, uh, even the telcos also to generate because they can, I think we are also going in the direction that we believe that at some point of time, even the setup of is not required. So what they, what they can, they can just integrate it with the TVs directly. That at the end of the day, the customer is going to use the TV and all the technology, if we are solving, so if you are solving all the infrastructure issues, okay, or the integration required, I think it's all uh, like, I mean, if I have the advertisement, um, all, all, all the, the inventory, I already have it here in, in, and I just need to integrate it with all the content providers. I think in that case, all the issue is being resolved. I think this is our role is going to be, and this is how we see it actually from Samsung perspective. Thank you so much, very clear. Um, thanks everyone again for your time. Really appreciate it, very insightful uh, discussion. I don't want to take too much away from the second panel. Uh, I want to hand it over uh, to Audrey, who has amazing discussion as well. Thank you, Asen. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the second panel discussion. Let me introduce myself. I'm Audrey Lewis, a Global Director of Partnerships uh, at Equative. Um, I'm pleased to be moderating this session today about CTV content and advertising um, that is becoming a big um, topic uh, in MENA, a big challenging topic as well. But before starting, um, I'd like to say thank you to all the panelists today who join us. Uh, and let me introduce them quickly. So today uh, we have Felipe De Leon, Global Head of Addressable Media at UM. Kelly Anley, Supply Director, Middle East and Africa from TID. Ranjit Langani, Head of Transformation, Asia Pacific, SVP from Nielsen. And um, last but not least, Richard Fitzgerald, CEO and founder of Augustus Media and Smashy. As Jan mentioned previously, ad spend on CTV uh, has been increasing significantly. Uh, for the past few years in the US and in Europe mostly, and it's keep growing. We are seeing a lot of traction in the MENA region as well, more and more uh, OTT players, uh, more and more streaming subscriptions, uh, the rise of um, the smart TV penetration. So we need to understand where we stand and what the main challenges are. So our group of experts will comment on the demand for CTV in the region, the content, the audience measurements, and the main challenge that we are facing in the region, and also the best practices that, we, that can be applied to the emerging field. 
So first of all, uh, I'd like to, to, to discuss uh, where, it, where we stand when it comes to CTV. And I would love to ask to uh, Kelly and uh, Felipe if you have seen uh, advertising investments on CTV this year. And if so, uh, where does it come from, who the buyer are, and what are their expectations? jean Philippe, do you want to start with the agency side of demand? Yes, go for it. Okay, I think he's having a problem uh, with the, I, I think I, I'll start, I guess. Um, I think it's a user uh, generated revolution. Um, I think it's interesting to, to kind of see the transition from, you know, traditional TV to, to web, mobile, and then we're back to TV again, smart TV. So I think Ed T's approach really is, um, it's an outcome. So if, if the client wants, you know, completed views, uh, then CTV obviously is the, the way forward. So it really depends on, on the outcome. The, the constraint with CTV, of course, is, you know, we we went down the road of rich media formats and we're, we're going back now to just, you know, video content with just fast and, and not fee paid. But I think in the region, um, we're, it's in its infancy, but I think we're, we're in a really good position because we have the blueprint from, from you know, our, our counterparts in the US and, and the EMEA to, to know the correct path moving forward and to offer the best uh, services to our clients on, on outcomes. Yeah, definitely agree. Felipe, do you want to add something? Up and... Uh, I think there is a technical issue here. Okay, uh, the time we fix it, maybe Richard, uh, you can share with us how Smashy TV approach uh, CTV in terms of uh, content, uh, monetization, offering uh, in the region? Yeah, thanks, Audrey. So Smashy really is a little bit like Cheddar in the US. So it started off as being a business linear service online. And uh, ideally, the way to do monetization was through subscription while we explored advertising. Uh, what we what we found is what we wanted to do was add advertising to the free video clips and keep advertising away from the 24 hour play out. Uh, but as you know, as Jan showed, uh, the different sort of nomenclature and the different sorts of ways of monetizing streaming and online content keeps changing. Uh, us as a business, we look at branded content, we look at say audience or display revenue and direct to consumer. So Smashy does have a direct to consumer element. Uh, all of the shows on Smashy, we can do branded content as well. And that leaves the third part of uh, connected TV. So how do we look at connected TV? Uh, and uh, really we need good tech partners. So we have a product director, Abdallah, who's on this call, who oversees all the uh, connected TV ad tech that, that we look at. And we have to make decisions around that. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so, so basically at the moment we do have, uh, we partner with Magnite and with Google and we're streaming ads at the moment on our inventory. It's relatively low. Uh, inventory at the moment. Uh, we do have some live sports on it as well, um, but we're making decisions now. At the moment, if you subscribe for Smashy, there's a one monthly fee. We haven't communicated that, but in our minds, that's the uh, ad supported tier. So, uh, you know, instead of reducing that in the future, now that the industry is becoming accustomed to subscribing and receiving ads at the same time, we think that's in our favor per se, but you know, it's it's about what do the audience understand. Previously, they were educated on free equals no ads, as Spotify kind of educated them. But now, free, you know, you can um, you can pay for subscription and receive ads. So technically, we we've, we've got all this in place at the moment. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much, Richard. Um, as you mentioned, both of you, it's very challenging right now, and. Um, I heard a lot about lack of measurement as the main challenge in this industry. Um, maybe, uh, Ranjit, you can share with us more uh, insights about that, uh, because I know that uh, Nielsen has done a lot of things in the other markets in terms of audience targeting and measurements. And I would love to know if you can also, if you think also that it can be applied in the MENA region. Yeah, no, thank you, Audrey. Firstly, I just want to say I'm happy to talk about the obstacles, but just up front, let me say 
uh, you know, we we are very bullish on CTV. Uh, that's both my personal view and Nielsen's view. Um, and, and there are actually many audience-centric reasons to be bullish, Audrey. If I can just maybe share quickly with the group, if you look at just a mature market like the U.S., uh, CTV is exploding, right? If you look at total audience time on media, which is about slightly north of 10 hours a day in the US, five hours roughly a day of that is video. CTV is already more than an hour a day uh, on average for the US consumer. So uh, that is obviously one, one sign. The other sign is when we look at just the TV glass and we just look at you know how TV time is spent, uh, streaming accounts for 35% of TV time, which is greater than broadcast, greater than cable. So that just shows that there is a, a, a huge market out there. And if we look to a market like the US, which is fairly mature, uh, there is a lot of opportunity. Now, if you look at obstacles and you think about obstacles, there's probably, you know, I'd like to think about it in three ways. Firstly, is there enough awareness and excitement for CTV? And I think just given all the conversations we've seen on this and the participation on this webinar, you could probably say that there's enough excitement. So I'd say check on that part. The second piece to me is the infrastructure, the enablers, the technology. And I think as the panel before us uh, probably shared, there were a few interesting sort of conflicting point of views, which makes the discussion rich. But it also shows that there's probably some progress, but some more progress to be made there on the technology side. And then I'd say the third piece that probably dictates how much uh, growth there is, is what I like to call sort of business return. Does CTV give you the ROI, right? And I think the jury is still out on that when it comes to the MENA region. And I think two things that will help there. I think one is the measurement, as you said, there is a, a lot of opportunity for us to start measuring this in a, in a much more a systematic way. But I'd say the second thing that might also help that is perhaps an obstacle today is we don't have too many success stories. So I think once uh, we work on the success stories and we work on the measurement piece, Audrey, I think that can really unlock and you know create a bit of a tipping point for CTV in the region. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, I think we are still missing some something today in terms of stories, as you said, uh, business uh, studies, but also maybe in terms of inventory, uh, the platform are not fully ready yet, and it's a new market, so we need to work on it definitely. And uh, so the inventory is quite limited, and uh, also we have some targeting capabilities that are not fully uh, operational, but uh, I'm sure that we are missing some stuff today, but uh, we are working on it. We are seeing a lot of tractions and uh, we will make the connected TV uh, market a success in this region as well. Uh, I think Felipe uh, can uh, talk uh, now, so I guess it's fixed. So if you want it's to- It's working, <laughs> great. <laughs> Sorry I don't about know what that. happened with my laptop. No, no problem. Probably it's my internet provider. Locking Zoom. So I was uh, talking about the, for Emirates, definitely CTV is a focus, not only in the region, but also worldwide. As it was mentioned before, perhaps in the region, there is the inventory is becoming bigger and bigger. But I think it's already a reality when we take into consideration some of the players that it was presented before, Shahid, Wayak, Yep TV. But also, even if you take the consumption of YouTube nowadays, uh, CTV represents 30% of impressions, don't quote me on that. It's just a figure that I check it out, followed by desktop, which is 5%. So it's already here, it's expanding. And then it's just find the, the when and how to utilize. And in terms of uh, your clients, your buyer, what, what are they expecting uh, on CTV? Uh, do you know what is the main concern? And, uh, goal for their campaigns? I think the, the point which uh, Ranjit mentioned, I think measurement is uh, it's huge, I think, and that we can break down in many ways. This is still measured like digital media based on impressions. Um, out of the inventory available, it's still, we still don't have the breakdowns as we have on TV. I want to know which content was delivered. I want to know which show. I want, to have, I want to have the same breakdowns or similar breakdowns as I have at TV and being able to purchase under the same way. So this is still a limitation, which you, you, don't, you don't mirror linear completely. It's something that is coming. And obviously, as Ranjit mentioned as well, and uh, uh, the colleague from the other panel, um, understanding this, these variables of um, is the TV on? 
can we talk about invalid traffic here as well? Because it's such a new device as well, and the same the same proportion it follows as well, the challenge of measurement and how to do it. So I think I would say this of measuring holistically, not only as a digital impression, to knowing as well for a fact the breakdown of where in the CTV, in which content, which channel, which program, and obviously being conscious as well of brand safety and in a qualitative environment, as our colleagues have mentioned in the previous panel. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Kelly, uh, from an ad tech perspective, um, do you think that CTV uh, investments will come uh, to programmatic or it will stay like um, mostly direct selling one-to-one -one between uh, buyers and publishers? I think for now it will remain direct, but I think, you know, advertising loves automation. So it is organically going to grow into the programmatic field. I think right now, because of the, you know, there is a lack of inventory. I think again, like I mentioned, we're in our infancy in the, the CTV landscape, but I think a tease offering for now is going to be an omni-channel or omni-screen approach where we, you know, we group it together for, for our clients. And we, we, you know, we launch campaigns across web, uh, mobile and app and CTV uh, as a package. I think that's how we're kind of going, going to get build the appetite with our advertisers, grow and learn the measurements, the, you know, the types of targeting that we can do until we kind of align or um, get to the point where the US and EMEA is right now. Perfect. Thank you so much for your sharing your insights. Um, to conclude, I would love to have uh, your point of view, uh, everyone, about how do you see the CTV market in the next uh, 16, uh, 18 months? Uh, what do you think it's going to be next year? And, uh, and also, if you'd like um, to, uh, and what, the, what is the main message that you'd like the audience to take away from this panel? Maybe, Richard, you can start. Yeah, I think, you know, the whole, all of this panel this is panel. bullish and enthusiastic about the next 18 months with CTV, led by, as we see, there's a lot of key players in the market. The infrastructure has been built over the last decade as well, um, from a tech point of view, from an uh, internet speed point of view. Uh, and now we have a lot of the advertisers here. Uh, the advertising market is also increasing. Uh, so I, I think we'll see... You know, the next year's IAB famous market sizing report will have a line item for CTV. However, we figure that out, whether it's part of online video or programmatic, et cetera. But we're, we're seeing other markets measure this in its own space, much like they tackle social and mobile before. Uh, I think, you, you know, we still will take cues from uh, the US and from global streamers to how we... Uh, how we implement CTV in terms of measurement, in terms of pricing. Uh, you know, many people are looking at CPM benchmarks, and I think that's something that this the IAB task force is going to look at as well. What what's the standard and education around CPMs? Uh, and then also not you know we it would be remiss not to mention a recession and people's propensity to spend higher CPMs on new uh, ad units as well. Uh, but yeah, so I'm I'm really optimistic about the next 18 months but i still think it's uh it's uh, it'll be test and learn budgets from clients and it's also test and learn uh from the publisher side as well or the broadcaster thank you uh, maybe Andre, you want to add something and your point yeah, yeah yeah thank you audrey i think just looking ahead maybe three three key messages for the audience i'd say number one uh, the way we think about TV is TV is not dead. It's just being digitally reincarnated. And I believe CTV is sort of that digital reincarnation. So I think that's my first point. I'd say the second point is uh, there is globally, you know, I, I agree with Kelly that we're still in the nascent stages in this region. But every sign that we've seen globally around CTV growth tells us that, uh, you know, once a market reaches a tipping point, there is explosive growth in that market. I think we're still a little bit away from that point in MENA, but if you just think about the US, last year, 28% of TV watching time was streaming. This year, it's 35%. Again, just in one year, we've moved seven points. So I think uh, explosive growth is coming is my second message. And then I'd say my third message is around measurement. Um, you know, I just wanted this group to know that Nielsen globally 
is reorienting how we think about measurement uh, by really thinking about everything cross cross media cross screen and obviously ctv is a big part of that and obviously to win in ctv measurement it requires us to think of it as a team sport which means many people need to come together different parts of the ecosystem need to come together to try and measure it holistically so those are my three messages thank you so much very helpful Kelly, do you want to, uh, to share with us like um, where, do, where do you see CTV uh, coming, is going next year and also the, the takeaway from this panel for the audience? Yeah, I mean, look, CTV, there's no doubt that it is going to be at the forefront of any media plan uh, moving forward. I think it's a matter of, you know, there's always like a chicken and egg situation, which comes first, the supply or the demand. So it's it's making sure that we, we're ready for, for that sweet spot. We have, you know, when we get the budgets from our clients that we're able to deliver. And I think, you know, in the next 12 to 18 months, it's going to be quite consultative with the OTT players and the, the tech players in, in the market to, to make sure that, you know, TEEDs can integrate and other partners can have access to, to inventory in the region. And, and it was mentioned CPMs. So I think that's going to be a big it's going to be a big um, negotiation tactic because it is a more premium environment. So is it going to be a programmatic rate? Is it going to be at a higher fixed when you go directly to publishers rate? So I think there, there's going to be um, there's going to be a lot of conversation around the topic. And, you know, we, we will reach a point where we are pretty much established and, and have a, a better vision of, you know, the two to three year plan then on, on CTV. Thank you. Definitely, pricing is a is an important topic, and uh, we need to to make sure that the market is educated on that as well. Um, Felipe, if you can also share with us your point of view. Okay. Your last sure. Uh, I echo what was uh, shared. I would um, point out that obviously inventory tends to continue increasing, as we have seen in the previous years, as we have seen post COVID, um, as well from a consumption perspective. I would um, ask as well from all the buyers, agencies, and obviously the industry to continue pushing for what's quality and obviously valuing the publishers, valuing the tech players that are assisting here to continue having an industry which is uh, nurturing this space. Thank you. Before closing this uh, discussion, do you have anything else you want to add related to content and advertising in the region, um, even globally, or just sharing a last thing with our audience today? No. Okay. Audrey, I would I would just say I mean I I, I perhaps um, will draw a parallel akin to electric cars or cryptocurrency a few years ago, right? Um, you, you require a few risk takers to really go in and learn and, and, and experiment and test and fail fast if you have to. So I, I'd probably throw a word of encouragement to the group that even though we're in the nascent stages, unless a few people really roll their sleeves up and dig in and try, we're never going to accelerate this. So that would probably be my, my closing comment. Yeah, I would add as well, I think, you know, uh, we are waiting for next wave media, whether it's metaverse or future. And, you know, you, you mentioned uh, sort of Web3 as well. But I think uh, we've had sort of 10, 15 years of uh, advertisers getting used to different types of digital formats. And, uh, you know, that parallel with TV. And I think this, oddly enough, this is the cusp of the next wave. You know, publishers and print publishers and social uh, agencies got used to how to put line items and measure it. And now the next sort of couple of years, people are get, going to get used to how to uh, measure and target people in the streaming environment. Uh, so it's quite exciting. And, you know, at, at one level, I think the parallel between TV is almost uh, the wrong way to approach this because uh, streaming and the Internet is inherently different to TV in terms of programming. It's very unconstrained and you know, uh, I think that r relates to how you book, how you plan, and also the formats that you do as well. So I think it's going to be quite nascent. And I think it would be a mistake to sort of uh, take a TBC and to book it digitally. And uh, I think it, there's going to be lots of interesting formats come up. And again, we'll be looking at, you know, what are what do the, the main players introduce and what sort of, and with new formats of media, we always see new formats of native advertising. And that's quite exciting. Definitely, yes. 
Okay, thank you so much, all of you, for your time. It was very interesting to discuss with you, with you and get your, your insights. Uh, I, so I'd like to thank you again for your participation. And uh, from, I'd like to thank also the audience for attending this panel and this first uh, webinar. Thank you so much for your attention. Thanks very much, uh, Audrey. Um, and thank you very much to the panelists and both panels. Thanks very much to Jan um, uh, earlier, who obviously took us through a really interesting landscape presentation. And thanks everyone to, to you for, for attending today. Um, there, are, there are questions in the chat. So if I could um, start with Philippe, I don't know if you can read the question or you want me to read it out for you, but basically it's what are the real challenges of buying CCD in Europe or the US versus MENA um, that, you're, that you're experiencing? Um, and you know how far behind do you believe MENA is than these kind of advanced markets like the US and, and Europe? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Stalik, as well for the question. Uh, the, the biggest barrier, in my opinion, is obviously the inventory availability. In US or Europe, you can go from program specific, you can go for live shows, you can go for sports events as well, uh, delivering at live, which in the region is still uh, not there, but we have many players, as mentioned before, uh, OTT in the regions as well, uh, ready to provide those. So once you open that inventory as well to be purchased uh, digitally, I think is the only limitation at the moment. And also we talk a lot about data and in general, not um, only the region, data and targeting as well. It is something that still mirrors how the TV works with the exception of some players, some tech players that can provide a more narrow and granular approach. So in summary, I would say only the inventory and I believe we are getting there as well for next year and onwards. Thanks very much. Um, I don't see any other uh, questions in the chat. Um, if anybody does have a question, raise your hand. This is your chance. Or as we said, obviously, you can reach out to us separately. Well, that's the first. We're having a webinar and it's finishing on time. So that's pretty good, pretty good effort to everyone who was involved. So once again, thank you to everyone who was involved, not only in setting it up, but taking part as well. It was certainly uh, an extremely interesting, I felt, um, uh, webinar and, and really does show the opportunities ahead for, for us in this region, particularly around CTV. We will, um, we have obviously taken a recording of this and we will place that recording on our uh, IB GCC YouTube channel. So you can share that um, or go back and, and relive some of the uh, comments and uh, learnings and experiences that you got. Um, and as I said, right in the beginning, there is a cheat sheet of terms and terminology for you to use as you, as you see fit, um, as well as a, a quick sort of top line view of who are the big players in the market uh, today. Obviously, we'll keep that up to date as time progresses. So thank you very much to everyone for joining. Thank you to the panelists and the speakers. Uh, look forward to one of the next IB GCC uh, webinars. I won't, won't tell you what it's about yet, but there definitely will be some interesting ones coming down the line uh, over the course of the next couple of months. So thanks, everybody.